Islamic exposure therapy. What does that mean? Exposure therapy, simply put, is about exposing one who has a fear of something to the fear stimuli in a controlled and safe environment and slowly allowing him to confront the fear, or confront her fear, and then getting over it bit by bit. One way of doing that is by creating a log. And this could work between a therapist and a client, or husband and wife, siblings, friends, roommates. If one of them, for example, is struggling with wudu and they're repeating it over and over again, he is told to make wudu in front of the friend or your wife or your husband or the clinician. And you carry with you the log. And you take note of how long it takes to do wudu on a Monday, for example. And you write 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And the intention is that by next week, inshallah, a week today on Monday, we're going to make the wudu 10 minutes. And then the week after, five minutes until you bring it back to a normal duration. That's one practical way of exposure therapy. Another way could be to strip the wudu from all of the extra sunan, all of the extras of wudu. So washing every limb that is needed and three times, no, we don't do that. We suspend that for a moment. And we encourage him to do wudu once without repeating it, without any of the extras to confront the fear of doing it wrong. And you're only gonna do wudu once, and once on each limb, not three times. And then when this is overcome, then we slowly reintroduce the other extra sunan of wudu. That's a second exposure type of therapy. As an example, a third very effective one is the idea of splashing some water on the private parts and the underwear after doing wudu for those who fear that after every time they do wudu, there is urine that is coming out of their body. So they think to themselves, I have to renew my wudu. Our scholars have mentioned this hundreds of years ago. A man came to Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. He said to him that every time I do my wudu, I feel that something has come out of my private parts. And so to renew my wudu again. So he gave him the following advice, purify yourself and do your wudu. Then take a bit of water, sprinkle it on your private parts. Then don't look back after this because Allah will take it away inshallah. So the idea here is that you apply some water, a splash or a sprinkle on the private parts or the underwear after doing wudu and purifying yourself such that if you feel any moisture or dampness, you say to yourself, ah, this is from the water that I had splashed. It's not from urine incontinence or something like that. And this is very effective. Our religion, mashaAllah, walhamdulillah, has given us objective measures to assess whether something is right or wrong, deficient or complete. And I'll give you an example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, if any of you senses a disturbance in his abdomen, and then he begins to doubt whether he has released a gas or not, then you are not to leave the masjid until you hear something or you smell something. That's it. An objective measure that can be quantified, counted, measured. Don't leave it to your imagination, I think, and perhaps, and I perceive, and I assume. Clear. Don't leave the masjid. Don't leave your salah. Your wudu is intact. Unless you are able to hear something or smell something. Another hadith. There is no wudu to be done except by way of sound or smell. Clear. Objective. What about when you doubt your salah? Did I pray three? Did I pray four? There is an objective measure here. You don't have to worry about it or leave it to assumption. The hadith says, if one of you doubts in his prayer and you forget how many you prayed, three or four, he should cast aside the doubt and build upon what you are certain. Then pray two prostrations of forgetfulness before you give the salam. If you'd actually prayed five units when it should be four, it's okay, those two prostrations will fix it. And if your prayer was complete and you'd made a mistake in thinking that you'd made a mistake, then those two prostrations of forgetfulness will just be there to disgrace the shaitan. Win-win situation. So he said what? Build upon what is certain. So if you are praying dhuhr and you doubt, did I do four or three? What's certain? Three. So you build upon three. This is how it works. So he says, build up on what is certain. Then you do two sajdas in the end, the two prostrations of forgetfulness. If you prayed wrong, they fix it, inshallah. And if you prayed correctly, don't worry. Those two prostrations, they will just humiliate shaitan. Imam al-Nawawi, he said, this means that it will disgrace and embarrass the shaitan in that he was unable to achieve his objective in disturbing your worship.